We are about to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But who is he really? That was the very question which he posed to his disciples at one point years later during his public ministry. Who do you say that I am? So who is Jesus Christ really, and what does he matter to me and to you? Welcome to Ignition. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into today's topic, we want you to know that we love listener feedback, so if you've got questions about today's episode, or if you have ideas for future episodes, or better co-hosts, please contact us. (gasps) The best way to do that is by email. The address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. Again, ignition at sfcatholic.org or our crayons at (laughs) sfcatholic.org if you want to lament with Renee. If you want to complain about his co-host, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Or complain about the host uh, if they're emailing you. Hi, Renee. Hi, Chris. Uh, So, Renee, we're going to talk about um, who Jesus is because we are about to celebrate Christmas. But in case somebody... Uh, has not tuned into Ignition before. Let's start with you know, ladies first. Okay. Who are you? Um, I am Renee Kranz. Uh, I am the interim uh, communications director for the diocese. Uh, I am married to Ryan for 18 years. Um, we live on the west side of town. I'm trying to think of different things Ooh, I haven't said before. I mean, west siders. Woot, woot. Although coming to work in by, like to downtown kind of stinks. There's no good way to get here. Without having to, yeah. Ugh. I just anyway. Avoid, I just avoid rush hour, that's all. You know, our listening area is bigger than the city of Sioux Falls. Do you realize that? I People do, don't care about but... your commute. Okay. I like the Packers. How about that? Oh, boy. Let's go back to the commute. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here and putting up with me one more sure. time. Um, if you never tuned in, uh, my name is Dr. Chris Bergwald. I'm the director of adult discipleship and evangelization. It does say doctor on my birth certificate, in case you're wondering. Ah, no, uh, no, no wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have been married to my wife, Jermaine, for 21 years um, as we're recording this. And she and I have five kids. She's from Ohio. I'm from central Minnesota. But all five of our children are born and raised here in sunny Sioux Falls, South Dakota. It was sunny today. Yeah, it's been yeah. pretty clear the last few days. Yeah. And there hasn't been much wind either, for that matter. Yeah. Did but we, anyway. Did we end up in a different state? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, we're not here to talk about the weather, though. The no. climate. We're here to talk no. about Christmas. Yes. Or, or the one who's being born was born, whose birth we're celebrating. Yes. How about that? How's that yes. sound? Yes. Um, so, Renee, the, the the reason I thought this would be good to talk about, obviously, we're approaching Christmas, mm-hmm. so it seems fitting to discuss Jesus. But uh, lately, our diocese, well, our diocese for a number of years, but especially since the arrival of our new bishop. What's his name again? Shoot. Uh, de... De Groot. De, de Groot. De Groot? Groot? I, I am De Groot. I think it's Groot. The, we need that. We need the T-shirt. Oh, I am De Groot. Groot. <laughs> Bishop Bishop Donald De Groot was. Yes, Bill. Do you have any? You're no. all gonna be fine. <laughs> yes. It's the. It's well, It's almost Christmas. <laughs> Just offering a little levity and. Okay. So... My daughter actually had that idea. We should make a T-shirt. I am. I'm Groot. with De Groot. Okay. Well, here I'll give you another one. Whenever I have to type, when I'm sending you an email, Chris. Yes. I don't know how, but for some reason, my fingers always want to put a T at the end of that. Do you Please know do not get a big head. That in April, about... <laughs> in April at Broom Tree Retreat Center in the Diocese of Sioux Falls, the uh, day of, there's going to be a day of recollection offered by one Dr. Christ Bergwald. <laughs> that has been, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's going to get a big head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he's going to be. He's already so got the T thing at the things. end is that is just a, it's a thing. Yes, exactly. So anyway, <laughs> oh, wow, we are getting. You're really distracting me today. Sorry. Right? So <laughs> I'll be good. We're about to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So Bishop DeGrood, uh, no, in all seriousness. So so Bishop has really like put the pedal to the metal in terms of a direction that that our diocese is already moving, mm-hmm. but but he's like you know poured gas in the fire. Yes. His vision statement. Do you know it yet, off the top of your head? Uh, yes, I do. Lifelong Catholic it. missionary discipleship through God's love. Right, so for the Diocese of Sioux Falls, that is what Bishop, through his prayer back this spring, just mm-hmm. within a couple of months of his arrival, just just became um, it became clear to him that that's what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was asking him 
uh, the, the direction the Spirit was asking him to lead us in, mm-hmm. forming lifelong Catholic missionary disciples through God's love. Um, you know, there used to be the WWJD, What Would Jesus Do? Right. I think we should have like little Ooh, bracelets. That, that would L-C-M-D-T-A-G-L be great. or something like that. Is the... <laughs> <laughs> Were those no? the right letters? <laughs> L-C-M-D-T-G-L. Yes, I wrote okay. them down just okay. to make sure. Because I've tried to do it off the top of my head oh, before. Yeah. And it's... <laughs> um, so, so forming lifelong Catholic missionary disciples through God's love. We are all called to be, if you go kind of to the middle of that, the, the heart in a sense, well, you could say through God's love is really the heart of it, but the, the middle of it at least, missionary disciples, mm-hmm. disciples. We are all, we've always been called to follow Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I remember Pope Benedict um, a number of years ago said, the Christian faith is not only a matter of believing um, certain things are true, but is above all a personal relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus Christ. Um, Pope Benedict in, sorry, Pope Francis rather, in the Joy of the Gospel wrote this. Actually, I'm going to, since I gave you, you know, the notes a little bit in advance, would you mind? You're going to make me read stuff, are you? Yeah, I'm going to make you oh, read. I know, I know. It's just what awful I what I ask of you. Uh, Evangelium EG3, kind of right there in the middle this of the page. Okay. I invite all Christians. Okay. I invite all Christians everywhere at this very moment to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ, or at least an openness to letting him encounter them. I ask all of you to do this unfailingly each day. No one should think that this invitation is not meant for him or her, since no one is excluded from the joy brought by the Lord. The Lord does not disappoint those who take this risk. Whenever we take a step towards Jesus, we come to realize that he is already there waiting for us with open arms. So Pope Francis, in his own way, uh, a very the, the, the Francis way, mm-hmm. restating that same thing, that we're all invited to a renewed personal encounter with Jesus Christ, uh, to a personal relationship with, with him. But, and you and I talked about this in a previous episode recently, in order for me to have a relationship with somebody, anybody, what's necessary? You have to know them. You have to know them, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you and I, and I think we used this analogy before. You and I, have both, we, we talked about the beginning of the show. We're both married, mm-hmm. and 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 in order to fall in love with our future spouse, we first had to get to know about them. Mm-hmm. In order to know them in a in a personal way, you have to know about them. In the case of a person, uh, normal relationships, seeing them or hearing mm-hmm. them, talking spending with them, time. spending time yeah. together. And then you learn about them too. And so there, there's, there's, I've talked for years, there's this, and a feedback loop is the right metaphor, but um, knowledge leads, at least in some cases, to greater love. That's right. Which lead, and the more we love, the more we want to know the person. Mm-hmm. So I've said before, um, I don't think I, I used this example though recently, um, there are times where I look at my wife, Jermaine. Mm-hmm. And, and and she's so sweet. Thank you. Um, I'm very lucky. Yep. I look at her, <laughs> and and in a way, she's a stranger to me. Not in a bad way, like mm-hmm. who are you and what do you do mm-hmm. with my wife? But just there's sometimes I I look at her and and, I, and I'm seeing her in a sense afresh because the every human person we're not even talking about God yet. Every human person. Um, is is almost an unfathomable mystery for any one of us, even the person who is married to right. them. Right. So, so I can spend, and God willing, will spend the rest of my life getting to know more about Jermaine. Mm-hmm. And in so doing, that will hopefully <laughs> lead to an increase in love yeah. of her. Yeah. I've had that same sense with Ryan off and on. You, you just look over and you're like, there's so much, or he'll say something, a story, you're like, how do I not know that yes, after all right, this time? Right, right, right. So, yeah. so, so that's that reality um, uh, in a spousal relationship or any good friend, any any relationship, that's true just as much in our relationship with God. Frankly, mm-hmm. it's even more so because with a human relationship, it might be that the more I get to know them, the more I realize, ah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what did not, I do? <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the case with, with God. The more we get to know him, the more we will 
fall in love with him. Mm -hmm. And the more we fall in love with him, the more we grow in relationship with him, the more we'll want to know about him. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to follow Jesus Christ, if we're going to be his missionary disciples, if we are going to um, deepen or begin a relationship with him, I need to know about him and I need to continue to increase my knowledge about him. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense it does um i think one thing for me and we'll see where you're going with this and if i take you off track just tell me to be quiet okay um be quiet i think for me oh, and i'm, not, I'm not the already. audience here uh, i already told you to be quiet and you're still talking no stop okay <laughs> um it's hard to uh imagine or understand having a relationship with someone you can't see yes. or sense in the room yes. with you um or hear a voice of, right so I think it's, it, at least for me, and I imagine it is for many other people, it's it's kind of difficult to grasp that. Yeah, so that, that's definitely true. Um, uh, so, so we will take a little bit of time because it's Good. worth talking about this. Um, it's definitely true that a relationship with God is different in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, even a long distance relationship, um, you, you can usually at least talk by phone. So Jermaine and I, uh, d- there was a time when two years in our relationship, including our year of engagement, I was studying for my doctorate in Rome mm-hmm. and she was finishing college and then working to pay for our wedding, um, mm-hmm. in the United States, in mm-hmm. Ohio. Um, so there was a distance, but, but we could talk by right. phone. Right. We could email back and forth. Right. Had it been now, you could have zoomed or something exactly. and seen right. each other. So, so, yeah. so we our senses and, and God created us created us as material beings right. where we do interact through our senses. Now, yeah. So we can know through our senses things like that God exists. Like mm-hmm. not we don't even though we don't see him, we can using our intellects, the world around us, we conclude that God exists. But in order to have that relationship with him, this is why there is the reality of the gift of faith right. that is given to us and 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 the grace by which that faith is deepened. Mm-hmm. So um the only reason I can have a relationship with God is because he initiates. He right. He he picks up. He, he's every girl's dream. He's calling us. Where you're not having to wait for him. When is he gonna get a? You know, no, he. It's he, been three days. He, he he does initiate. Now you might be like, so if I don't have a relationship with him, does that mean it's on me? Well, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, but it might also be that maybe he's reaching out, but that moment where you're aware of it is just yet to come. And maybe, frankly, sure. right now, if you're asking the question, that's usually a sign that. He's knocking maybe a little bit more loudly than he has right, before. Right. So if you're wondering, how do I have a relationship with, how do I have a relationship with someone who I cannot touch, see, he, hear, yeah. or, or, or interact with the way I do with everybody else with whom I have a relationship? Mm-hmm. A, the fact that you're asking a question is a good sign that actually God is moving right. in your mind, in your heart. B, or two, I guess. <laughs> <Your fingers>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh I, 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 <laughs> um, no, secondly, that's also an indication, uh, or ask for the grace. So you're, you're like, oh, right. ask Lord, help me to know that you're real. Help me to know that I can have a relationship with you. One of my favorite authors, Peter Kreeft, who is probably the most readable philosopher mm-hmm. in, in at least American, modern American history. Um, he, he, he wrote something called the skeptic's prayer. Okay. God, and this is more like for the like atheists. God, I don't know if you exist, hmm. but if you do, help me to know that you do. It's a little bit longer than that, but that's the gist of it. Right. Similarly, if you're somebody who like um, you believe in God, but you don't really have a relationship with Him, but this is like, is this possible? Make that part of your prayer, mm-hmm. Lord. This idea of a relationship with you is well new to me. Maybe I've heard it before, but it's new to me. Um, give me the grace to know that this is possible, mm-hmm. even though I can't see you. Right. Help me to know that you're real and alive and present to me. Yeah, and mm-hmm. if you ask, he will. He will, and he will, he will He'll answer. He'll come through, yeah. Uh, be careful what you wish for. Yes, <laughs> very true. <laughs> so, so does that answer your question? Yeah, okay, it does. great. Uh, if you're just tuning in, you listen to Ignition. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, uh, visiting today with... Renee Kranz. Renee Kranz. And we're talking about um, who is Jesus really? So the importance of having a relationship with him. But again, it's important that we really know the real Jesus because you can't have a real, you cannot have a relationship with a figment of your imagination. Right. You can't have a relationship um, with somebody who's not real. Right. So Jesus is real. 
What about your imaginary friend? Now wait. Well, that's not really a relationship. It's just all you. It's all in your it's head. It's all in your head. Right? Imaginary. Mm-hmm. Jesus is not imaginary. Jesus is not imaginary. Right. He's okay. real. And and if I'm going to have a relationship with him, I have to know the real him. Like if. Right. Uh, I Yeah. So what, again, a human relationship. If if you would have described Ryan as a 6'9", 6'10", uh, center, uh, basketball center, um, from Southern Florida. And then he heard this and think, who the heck are you talking about? Because that's not me. Right. So clearly we don't have a relationship because the way you describe me is not, I don't recognize that guy. Right. Right. Um, the same thing is true with Jesus. We need to know about him so that we can love him. So tell me about Jesus, Renee. This is the fun part of the show Jesus. where I get to quiz you. Okay. Well, you and I have talked, you've mentioned a couple of times that a lot of people see Jesus as a big teddy bear. Yeah. So that was what I instantly thought of with that. But um, okay, so Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, what does that mean? He is fully God and fully man, but he's the second person of the Trinity. Uh, what else can I tell you? That's what you're doing really well. He came. God sent him to us. Wait, I think at, at the nativity. But is, is it he God? Uh, yes, but you just said God sent him. Well, that's what it says in the Bible. Why are you questioning me right now? <laughs> <laughs> you did you did so well. I know, and then I you went off so well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that was really good. So that was true, enough. Okay. True, good. Yeah. True. True God and true man. Mm-hmm. So uh, traditionally, actually, this is this is going to be really unfair. In fact, I'm going to have to get out my. my okay. Well, uh, let, no. Let's see if I know. <laughs> what do we say in the creed about Jesus? Uh, well, he's the, consubstantial with the Father. What? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for going right there. Yeah. What does that mean? Consubstantial. He shares his substance. Isn't that basically what that means? Yes. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when the church was, and, and this is going to get, we're going to get a little bit into the deep end of the theological pool here, but this is really important because the church recognized at the beginning as she was teasing out, okay, who and what exactly is Jesus? Mm-hmm. Who and what exactly is God? They, they, they tease this out, not because, you know, we just really like to make people think hard and feel stupid, <laughs> feel stupid. <laughs> but because you are God. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, it's because this is about our salvation. Right. And if we get our theology wrong, that means our self, our understanding of salvation is whacked. That's a formal theological term. Right. Whacked. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, whactum is the yeah. Latin. <laughs> so, this is quite the episode so, so far. <laughs> so, we have 10 minutes left. Um they, they, it was really important that they be precise in their language okay. because because our eternal salvation hinges. Right. That's why they use all those things. big specific words. Consubstantial. Yeah. So with God, uh, the tr- with the Trinity and with the Incarnation, uh, we, we talk about persons and natures. Mm-hmm. My, cl- my everyday who's and what's. Okay. That makes sense. So... Um, and just, I, I, I didn't prep you on this, so just, oh. you're always good about rolling with things, though. In God, how many who's are there and how many what's are there, would you say? Well, there's three who's. Three who's, three persons. Three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. Um, well, I would say there's two what's, because there's the spirit, the the God is spirit, and then God is man. Well, so, but is we're just right? focusing on divinity now, right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so, in, in God as God... How many There's what's are there? What's one? One. So okay. one divine nature or substance, consubstantial. Okay. So what the the whatness of God, His divine essence, His divine nature, what it means to be God. There, there's only one God. So there, what? Right. But within God, there are three persons, mm-hmm. three who's: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You want to go, Doctor Seuss? I know. So also, I'm like, no. <laughs> just also another thing that's just hard to grasp and it, know, oh, to, talk well, about yeah, forever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We'll never. I mean. Our, you our, can he, say it and be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> um, Jesus, mm-hmm. how many who's, how many what's, how many persons, how many natures? Well, then he would be one person with two natures, right? Okay, so what kind of a person is he? He's the second person of the Trinity. So a divine person. Yep. Okay. With two natures, divine and human. 
So two what's in Jesus and one, one who. who. So Jesus is not a human person. Oh, oh you got me. I, I don't know. Is, is he two persons? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> I'm asking you. One person. Okay. So Jesus Jesus is a human being. He, being okay, nature. Sure. Well, he ha- he's he a, is human a human being, being when he was here. He's... Is he still the, a human being in he's heaven? He's still a human being. Okay. Uh, how do we know that? I don't know. <laughs> because his body, because he he, he ascended he some, into heaven. Uh, sure. Body, okay. But well, body and soul. That is so confusing. And so so he is a human being, but he's not a human person. The who in Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, who took on, who assumed human nature. So the second person of the Trinity, from all eternity, has had a divine nature. Right. But he he assumed he took on oh, yes, at yes. the incarnation okay. a human nature. Yep. So there is one who, but two what? Yep. Did you see the light bulb go on? Uh, well, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. what what uh-huh. just happened? Uh, well, I remembered something. Okay, I listened to Catholic Answers live a lot. Yeah. And G- something Jimmy Aiken said was the with the uh, that Jesus took on the human nature, just what you were saying, and that. Reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. And now now I remember. Right. So, yes. so who cares? Well, we better care. Or we'll Why? Get it. We'll, like you said, we'll get our salvation wrong and we'll be We're supposed to follow. We're supposed to follow. He invites us to follow him. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, who is he? Mm-hmm. He's a divine person with a divine and human nature. Two natures, one person. Mm-hmm. Okay. What does that mean? So, is he... Half God no. and half man? No. Kind of like a minotaur? <laughs> no. No. He is fully both. How can you be fully both? He's God and he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> can he make a rock so heavy that he can't lift it? No, because that would def- that would defy his laws. So can he break it? Can- God can't break his laws? Well, he could, but he doesn't. Okay, that's good. I'm Sorry. making stuff Sorry. up now. Can you tell? <laughs> so he's 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 fully God and fully man, yes. right? Be- because divine nature and human nature, like for <laughs> if I could reach across the table, our natures when they come together, right? One has to get out of the way, right? Or more like usually likely, mine. If you, usually, if you're gonna slap me, which you probably are, this is, my nature has to move in order for okay. your when your nature impacts mine. Sure. But divine God's nature as God um, is completely transcendent of us. So there is no competition between divine and human nature. God, and this happens with us in baptism in a way that uh-huh. mirrors, okay. not the same as what happens with right. Jesus, but with Jesus, the human nature and the divine nature, the divine uh, as it assumes the human does not have to push out of the way because it's... In his divinity, Jesus transcends us, so he's able to draw them together. Here's the thing, though. They're not mixed. Right. They're not mixed, and, and, and we have a couple minutes left, but I do really, I do want to take a minute just to, to point something out from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, we confess that one and the same Christ, Lord and the only begotten Son, only begotten Son, is to be acknowledged in two natures without confusion, change, division, or separation. Okay. So, Jesus' two natures are united in his one person without confusion. The divine and human, mm-hmm. they, don't, they don't... Not they, mixing. It's not yeah. a big melting pot right. together. They don't mix. Without change. One doesn't change into the other. Without division, though. Mm-hmm. Like, they, um, they're not on the opposite side of the dance floor. They're, they're united together or separation. Again, there's no, there's no division or separation between them. Okay? Okay. So, in his... In Jesus... His divinity and humanity, one, uh, 100% divine, 100% human, mm-hmm. fit together, if you will, perfectly, but without confusion, change, division, or separation. He is fully and perfectly human. He is fully and completely God. But the he is the second person of the Trinity. Mm-hmm. Does that yep. make some sense? Okay. As much sense as it can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so we, we've got about three minutes left. And, I, and again, I want to go back and, and connect this to this the, the so what question. If we are going to have a relationship with Jesus, we have to recognize that getting, 
well, if we're, going back to what we said before, if we have a relationship with anybody, I have to understand them. Mm-hmm. And if I want to grow in relationship, I need to grow in understanding. So maybe everything, you did really well. You did very well in answer. For once. <laughs> but bo- bo- both you and I, so you who are a well-formed mm-hmm. um, Catholic, me with a doctorate in mm-hmm. theology. Both, a weller formed. A weller formed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, we're both called, and even and the person maybe who is like, this is all completely new to me. Mm-hmm. All of us are called, invited to deepen our understanding of who and what Jesus is. I, so even more so, I think the better example, I've got a doctorate in theology. Um, I, I've taught Christology, mm-hmm. the, the, who is Jesus and what is Jesus Christ. I've taught before, but I'm called to follow him and love him with all of my being, including all of my mind. Mm-hmm. So I too, just as much as the beginner, just as much as the person in the middle, we're all called to deepen our understanding of who Jesus is so that we can love him more. To clear away misunderstandings, mm-hmm. It's the real Jesus, but to grow in relationship with him. Right. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. Thoughts. So we got about a minute and a half to go. Thoughts, questions before we kind of Um, wrap this up. Maybe this will be a future, future one. But when you're talking about how his two natures. So is that, is that also reflect us when, if we go to heaven? Uh, we we don't, take on a divine nature. No, we don't take on. Well, we become part. We, we divinized. Become, we, yeah, we're so divinized. So we participate same. in the divine nature, but becomes an act, uh, a, a property. Okay. Uh, so you know, that's a great question. Um, Sorry, I waited till the end. Our <laughs> nature takes on the property of divinity, but not as another nature, as a, as a okay. as a property. We still only have one nature. One nature. Okay. One. And yeah, and you and I. Well, I have one person. You've got about ten, I think. But <laughs> it's a. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> uh, other other final questions just in the last minute? No, I no, that okay. was great. So um if you if you want to learn more, there's all sorts of great resources, the catechism. But uh just recently, just a couple of weeks ago, um I, I gave a two hour presentation at St. Therese Parish in Sioux Falls. If you go to www.sfcatholic.org slash conversations sfcatholic.org slash conversations, um, you can see the live stream of that presentation that I gave at St. Therese Parish. So as we're approaching Christmas, entering into the Christmas season, I just want to invite um, all of you, no matter where you're at in your understanding of your faith, your relationship with God, spend some time getting to know Jesus more. Christmas is a season that's just beginning. We're celebrating his birth, but this is a great time um, maybe to get to know him more through our prayer, but also through a little bit of study. And when we do, it will change us. And that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Again, you can email email us at ignition at sfcatholic.org with any thoughts, questions, or ideas for future episodes. And until next time, dear listeners, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.